Let me show you how to test the compression in your Aston Martin V12 engine. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to test the compression in an Aston Martin V12 engine. Now I have a DB9, but the V12 that's in a Rapide or a DBS or a Vanquish or a Virage, uh, maybe even the old Vanquish, as long as it's a V12, this process is pretty much the same. Now, why would you be testing your compression? Well, uh, this might be you're concerned about uh, some sort of peculiar misfire going on that you can't nail down to coil packs or spark plugs, or maybe if you're even worried about that your uh, primary catalyst has failed and you've ingested some of the ceramic material and it's gone in and you're worried it's worn the cylinder bores, so you wanna see if you've got a mechanical seal failure going on there. Um, so there could be any reason, but this is kind of a, a Wally Raddit type thing. I'm doing my spark plugs and coil packs right now. So uh, you have to do all this work to be able to get the compression tester in anyway. So this is a real logical time to do it. It's kind of a while you're at it topic. Um, so I would say if you've got your plugs out, why not take a few extra minutes to just do the compression test and check that everything's healthy. And now compression is essentially the, the pressure level that builds up in the, cis, in the cylinder when the piston reaches top dead center. So across all 12 cylinders, we should see the same maximum pressure buildup if everything is equal and working right. What we're looking for though, as a sign of a, of a problem, is one of the cylinders or maybe more than one might be down on compression. They won't reach the same pressure level as the other cylinders. So we're gonna check all 12 of them. They should all be within a few percent of each other. But if one is uh, particularly low, we might have a mechanical sealing problem going on in that particular cylinder, which means dollar signs. So the process only takes a minute or two. Let me show you which tools we're gonna need. We only need essentially one real tool to get this done. We need a co engine compression tester. So I went out and I bought this kit on Amazon for under $20 US. And there are lots of these out there, but basically the kits usually have uh, a compression testing gauge that goes up to 300 PSI. There's a pressure release and uh, the good kits will, and this is something you absolutely need is you need a, a kit with a long hose down to the uh, compression test. Cause we have to go down probably a six inch bore to where the spark plug hole was um, and uh, also, we have to do it while we're under the uh, cowl of the engine compartment. So we're gonna have to slip this in on an angle on some of them and twist them to tighten them up. So uh, anyways, this is a pretty common item. It'll have a little O-ring and it'll have a connection that works with the, uh, the gauge. And you can put the, the better ones have the gauges removable. So while you're installing the hose, uh, you're not banging and flopping around with the gauge. So anyways, the good news is a kit like this uh, is about 20 bucks and I'll have a link in the description and in my companion blog article. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you're gonna wanna record all 12 of your cylinder compressions. So you're just gonna need a pen and a piece of paper to do that. And uh, you'll probably need a, a rag and an inspection light while you're uh, tackling this as well. So uh, let's go uh, use the tool and get it done. So before we start using the compression tester, a few prerequisites. Actually, there's a lot of prerequisites. And if you have a look over here, you have to do a ton of work to get to the point where you can stick the compression tester down into the spark plug hole. Um, I'm not gonna cover all of it here because I've got videos on all the steps on how you can get to the point of where your spark plugs are removed. And I'll have a link to some of those video videos up here. Uh, but basically you have to take off the intake manifolds, which requires taking off the engine braces. And once you get the intake manifolds off, you can take off the covers for the uh, spark plug chambers, pull out the coil packs, pull out the spark plugs, and then we'll be actually ready to test. So with the prerequisites out of the way, we're gonna take us on to the first thing we have to do. Step one is we have to worry about gasoline flooding out all over us while we're cranking the engine over. Um, Right now, all the fuel injectors are removed because that's part of the uh, process to get in to where the spark plugs are. But I've already told you in previous videos, you need to disconnect your battery to keep you from getting yourself covered in gasoline. 
Well, we need the battery reconnected to do the compression test. So step one is we're gonna go into the boot, the trunk, and we're gonna remove relays one and two from the fuse box back there, which is gonna disable the fuel pumps and keep us from getting ourselves covered in gasoline. Before this key goes into that ignition switch, we're gonna definitely need to uh, disconnect the fuel pump relays. Um, you're thinking, oh, well, I'll just turn the car on, but it's not started, so there won't be any fuel pressure. No, the fuel pumps run as soon as the key reaches the on position. So we have the open injector rails up there right now, so we need to uh, disable those fuel pump relays now before the key goes in. So I'm just gonna leave that out and let's go into the trunk and uh, disconnect those relays. It just takes a sec. So here in the trunk, the fuse box we're worried about is here under this panel. So this is just held down by Velcro and we lift it away and you can see the Velcro and set that aside. So in here we have our tool kit, uh, which you don't really need to remove, but so that's out. But this is the, uh, the boot fuse, uh, fuse box. And there's a tab on that side there and another tab here. You just squeeze and lift and then the cover will come away. And I have a little duck it underneath that cable at the back. So here we have the fuse box. Fuel relay one, fuel relay two. So uh, these are just little cubes that you just essentially pull up. I'm just waggling it. And that came out. Now this one I found is kind of hard to get out because I can't get my finger onto the far side. So I'm actually going to re remove relay three temporarily. Now I can get my fingers around relay two and it's out. And I'm going to put back in relay three carefully. So with these two relays out, now my fuel pumps cannot run even when the circuit's energized. So um, let's go up front and start getting the compression tester installed. All right, back up front here. Um, just a reminder, we wanna have all the spark plugs removed when we do a compression test. We don't want the other cylinders fighting back pressure-wise. So normally when you do a compression test, you remove all the spark plugs. Another tip is up here. Now I have, uh, blue tape covering all my intake ports right now to keep debris from getting into them. We, you have to think about this when as soon as we start spinning the cranking the engine over, all those cylinders are going to start to suck again. They're going to pull air and I don't want to suck air in or suck the tapes into the intakes. So you actually have to temporarily remove all of this so that the cylinders can breathe normally. Now, also, if you've stuck a rag or a paper towel or something in there, instead of using tape to keep the debris out, absolutely, you've got to remove all those now because that rag is going to go right into the cylinder. Um, so you want those open for easy breathing. And now we can go ahead and fit the uh, compression tester. So I'm going to test the cylinders in order. One, two, three, four, five, six on this side, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 on the secondary bank. Um, so now it's time to insert the tool. Uh, now there is an O-ring, uh, if we come in here for a close look, and some threads. So I want this to slide in easily. So I'm just gonna put a little drip of oil on here from something. And you wanna make sure they're all oiled up well because you're gonna insert this by hand. You do not, well, you can't even use it with a tool. Uh, so you're more or less just going to be dropping this down blindly into the spark plug hole for cylinder number one. And then you're going to be fishing. <laughs> you're just going to be spinning it. Uh, it's caught. And you just want to do it up snug so I can feel my O-ring bottoming out now. And that's it. You don't want to, you don't need to tighten it to super tight because you, of course, you're going to have to get this thing undone again soon. So that should hold pressure. And Next up, we're just going to snap in the compression gauge. And it's at zero PSI. You want to make sure you've released any pressure that might have been there. So we're at zero PSI. The gauge is installed. Next up, it's time to actually crank the engine over. So it's time to crank the actual engine over and see what pressure builds up. Now you can do this solo. You can just set the gauge to the side, hop in the car, turn the key, press the start button for uh, 
one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. I'd hold it about that long. Now when you do that and your car is all apart like this, you are going to get a series of warning lights like no other on your dash. It's going to tell you about all sorts of things or critical engine mode and the temperature's not right. Don't panic. You'll clear all those with your OBD2 reader at the end. Um, so uh, I have cameraman Rob sitting in the car so you guys can watch and we have the camera set up on a tripod. So I'm going to do the voice activated, turn the engine over. All right, Rob, hit it. So ignition on now, no fuel coming out. And let's go ahead and crank. So that's about four seconds and you can see the pressure built up quickly and I got to just over 225 PSI. So I'm gonna go write that down on a piece of paper to keep track of it. And now I'm going to release the pressure. And I can disconnect my gauge. Carefully untwist my tool and move it into cylinder number two. So I'm not gonna sit here and bore you to death while I do all 12. I'm gonna do it in time lapse and then we'll get together at the end and I'll show you the results of my numbers. Okay, with the testing done, a couple things to remind you. Uh, take your key out of the ignition. Disconnect your battery again to finish the rest of your plug and coil pack work. Um, and go now put fuel pump relays back in, put your cover back on, put your toolkit back in, and put your carpet back in the trunk. So with that done, let's take a look at my results. Um, and if we zoom in here, even though my crappy handwriting, basically, uh, 230, 220, 225, 220, 225, 225s all the way through the rest. Uh, I suspect these 220s, if we just cranked over one more time on that cylinder, it probably would have gotten to 225. So uh, if you think about it, uh, I'd say that the correct compression for at least the 450 horsepower uh, V12s is 225 PSI plus or minus five PSI. So that's about 2% tolerance, which is terrific. All of my cylinders are healthy. I got nothing to worry about, and I'm gonna get back to finishing up my plug and coil pack change. So hopefully you find this interesting. Maybe you'll do it the next time you've got your plugs out just to check on your engine. Um, so down here, you're gonna find a link to my companion blog article. I'll probably have links to the, where you can buy the tool. And uh, up here, you'll probably see my video on how to reinstall the spark plugs. Uh, if you like videos like this, please subscribe down here. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Let me know what compression ratio you got on your car. And if you found one that was maybe uh, low or something like that. Thanks for watching.